Well, 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 here's Mama Bloom's brood. two sons-in-law have apparently injected modern ideas and methods into the knee pants factory, even to the point of suggesting that uh, Pa retire from the business. Well, it's Saturday afternoon, the factory is just closed for the day, and Papa is home. And naturally, the retirement is still a subject of discussion, as Ma says. Jake. Jake. Yeah? Oh, what did you say, Becky? Nothing yet. First, I have to wake you up. Why are you sitting there mopping? Moping, Mama. One or the other, you look very sad. Jake, what's the matter? You should know. Am I a mind reader? To know what I'm thinking, you don't have to be a mind reader. I'm thinking about Sydney and Harold. Oh, Sydney and Harold. Sydney and Harold. Harold and Sydney. Sydney and Harold. <laughs> like two foxes, they come into the knee pants business. One of them makes a uniform factory for me, and the other one gets a fancy office. And they both say I should retire. You know, Papa, maybe it would be a good thing. Mama. Mama, what are you saying? Should I leave the business to them? I'm saying that maybe it would be a good thing. You're not agreeing with those two. Maybe I'm not agreeing with them. Maybe I'm saying something that I thought about. You, Mama? Why not? Look, Jake, for 20 years you've worked hard in the factory. Everybody knows you did. But you don't have much fun. Mama, I am not in business for fun. Hmm. Uh, Papa? Yeah? I'm thinking again. Mm-hmm. And I think that maybe Harold and Sydney is wrong. You're right. Maybe you could not afford to leave the business. Now you're talking sense. <laughs> I can't afford to leave the business. Why can't I? Look, Jake. Here we got two son-in-laws. But first we had two daughters. So our daughters got married. Yeah, I know that, Becky. Let me finish, Jake. I'm coming to a pinpoint. Now, we think our daughters are smart girls. Maybe the smartest in the whole world. But across the street there's Mr. and Mrs. Schwartz. So they got two daughters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, well. Well, what about it? That I'm coming to. Mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Schwartz, they think their girls is the smartest in the world. We think ours are. So ours get married. The fellas they married, they come into the factory. Mr. and Mrs. Schwartz, they know that. And they think, aha, now we will see how smart yet and Sarah is. If they married smart fellas, then they see are going to work every day and they think to themselves, Jake Bloom, he's got to go to work every day. He can't trust Sidney and Harold with the business. So yet and Sarah didn't marry smart fellows, so they're not smart themselves. Mama? Yeah? Are you finished? Yes, sir. All right, then I see what you mean. Well, sure. Maybe that's clear as a watch, Christine. And do you think the Schwartzes would think that? Who knows what anyone will think, Jake? But you just said they would. I said maybe. But the maybe was a little stronger than usually. Mm, maybe you're right, Becky. But I cannot leave the business. Of course not, Papa. For 20 years you've lived business. To take you away now would be like pulling a, pulling a fish from water. Maybe Harold and Sydney are smart. Jake, our girls got a good education. High school, collegiate. But in school, do they teach you to fall in love with smart people? That you have to learn by yourself. They don't print it in books. If they did, I never read anything about it. Mm, Becky, maybe you didn't marry a smart fellow? Jake, I married the smartest man in the world. <laughs> Mama, sometimes you say the nice thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I married a man so smart that he has to stay in business all his life, so he'll stay smart. A man so smart that he forgets about the ad word, all work and no play makes Jake a dull boy. What do you mean? 
We don't have fun, Jake. Fun, fun. We had fun at Sarah's wedding. So we have to wait until marriages before we can have fun when there are a lot of people around. So we can't have fun anymore by ourselves? By ourselves? Sure, Jake, sure. Before you had the business, we had fun together by ourselves. Yeah, Mama, I remember. Yeah. Sunday we'd go to Coney Island, go out in the little boats and paddle around in the water. You would row, and the next day you'd not be able to run the sewing machine. Uh, but I didn't mind it, Becky. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'd not have enough money to pay the man. Is that so? I always had enough money to pay the man. Sometimes you would not have enough money to pay the man. Like the time you borrowed 15 cents from me. I borrowed 15 cents from you. 15 cents, and you still got it, Jake. 15 cents. Hey, all right, I'll give it to you back now. No, no, Jake. I want you to keep that 15 cents. What's 15 cents? If mm -hmm. you give it back to me, I'll have nothing to remember 15 cents for. But now the way it is, Jake, when I get 15 cents change at the store... I remember the times we went to Coney Island together. Yeah, Mama. You remember the time we lost the lunch basket? Yeah, yeah, and we could find nothing to eat but ham sandwiches at the counter. <laughs> <laughs> Jake. Yes, Mama? Jake, um, did you eat one of those sandwiches? Oh, Mama, you were with me all the time. How could I eat one? Well, when you went to see about the train, you was gone for ten minutes. <laughs> you was awful hungry, Jake. Now, Becky, you know. Yeah. I will answer it, Mama. It's Sarah. She said she was coming. All right, I'll let her in. Hello, Paul. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Sure, sure, she's in the parlor, okay. Sarah. <laughs> Hello, in. Sarah, darling. Hello, Ma. Did you bring what I told you to? Yeah, here it is, Ma. Ah, uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, Papa, give me a blank check. A blank check? It comes again? Why should I give you a blank check? Give me a blank check, please. I'm don't ask questions. Uh, Mama, I'll write in the amount. Never mind, Papa. I'll write in the amount. Please give me the check, eh? All right, Mama, but uh, will you tell me what it's for? Right now, it shouldn't make any difference, Jake. I'll make the check out later, Sarah. Well, that's okay. There's no hurry. Mama, tell me what is in the envelope. Jake, curiosity is unhealthy for cats and people. What's in the envelope is just something I bought. What could cost so much that comes in a little envelope like that that you should have to have a blank check for? Diamond rings, too. And who's getting a diamond ring? Nobody's getting a diamond ring, Jake. Becky, then why do you talk about them? You ask me a question. I gave you a civilian answer. Diamond rings might cost a lot of money, but I didn't buy a diamond all ring. All right, all right. Then what did you buy, Mama? I will show you later. Sarah, where's Sydney? At the office. At the office? Wait, where's my hat? I'm going to the office right Jake, now. Jake, what for? I should go to the office on Saturday? And then Sydney's at the office and I'm not there. I get nervous. I can't even read the newspaper because on every page I see office furniture advertisements. I see everything for Sydney to spend money on. And Harold. Sarah, where is Harold? With Sydney at the office. Oh, they're together again. Of course, Pa. They're ambitious. I don't want that they should be ambitious. I only want them to be careful. You can't be ambitious and careful at the same time. Mama, what are you talking about? I'm talking about two men. One man's ambitious, the other one's careful. The ambitious man takes a chance, he gets his name in the newspaper. The careful man don't take the chance, and nobody hears about it. Mama, that's all right for you to say. But when Sydney and Harold are being ambitious, they're being ambitious with the knee pants business. I am going to the factory. Jake, you are going to sit down and take it soft. Take it easy, Ma. You should rest. Rest, rest, Mama, how can I rest? Now you see why I shouldn't retire. I would leave Sydney and Harold alone for only two days, and when I come back, <laughs> maybe they would have Sam in a uniform. Oh, Jake, that's silly. Why should they put Sam in a uniform like a movie usher? Mm -hmm. Sydney and Harold would have a reason. Mm. Sarah, what were they doing at the office? Well, when I left, they were just finishing up a sale. A sale? A sale? Well, why didn't they tell me? Who's the customer? I don't know, Paul. When I saw they were busy, I left. You should have stayed around. Now I know I'm going to the office. Papa, what you didn't know wouldn't hurt you. Before Sarah came, you didn't know about the customer. Now you know, so why should you worry? What are they selling, Sarah? Uniforms. You see, Jack? It's like I said. Knee pants you should know about. Uniforms you should let Sydney handle. Wait, wait. What uniforms? I just remembered we ain't got uniforms to sell. I know. I think I heard them say they were going to be custom-made. Custom-made? Special design, special work, special prices. Don't worry about it, Paul. Don't worry, she says. Don't worry. <laughs> Sarah, answer the telephone. I don't worry. Hello. Oh, hello, darling. Are you finished? Yes, I'll be here for a little while. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh, uh -huh. quick, quick. Is it Sydney? Just a minute, darling. Yes, Pa, it's Sydney. Of course, Sydney. Who else would she be calling darling? Sarah, $3.50 a month. I pay for the telephone, but it's cheap if I can find out what happened. All right, Pa, here. You talk to Sydney. Oh, thank you, thank you, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hello, 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 Sydney. This is Papa. Sydney, who's the customer? He's gone. Well, why did you let him get away? Which way did he go? Oh, oh you did. Custom made. Good, good. All right, Sydney. Oh, oh wait, Sydney, Sydney. <laughs> did you get a deposit? Good. Good, yeah, yeah, you're good. All right, Sydney, all right, fine. Goodbye, you're a smart boy. <laughs> 550 custom-tailored uniforms they sold to our military school. Mm -hmm. Sarah, you married a smart, uh, you married a genius. Harold helped too, Paul. He went out and contacted the man at the military school. You see, Jake, like I always said, don't trouble with trouble until it comes around to you. Then it's time enough, even sooner. <laughs> but, Mama, maybe the next time they're not so lucky. Lucky, Jake? No, I don't think so. When Sydney sold the red uniforms the other time, maybe he was lucky. But when the same thing happens the second time, then you don't think it's lucky. Well, I'm going to run along, Ma. All right, Sarah, darling. 
Maybe you and Sydney will come over this evening. Yes, and Harold is coming. Okay, we'll be over. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye darling. darling. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Hey. Well, Jake. Well, well, what, Becky? Maybe you think now that your son-in-law is a smart boy? Sydney, yes, Sydney, yes. But Harold, I'm not sure about. You heard what Sarah told you. Harold went out and got the business. To do that, you got to be a rustler. Hustler. Whatever it is, Harold is in. Hmm. Maybe I could. Uh, well, Mama, maybe I could take a little time off. Jake, a little time is not good at all. It's voiced in too much. When you take too little time, then you're worrying how much fun you can squeeze in. Like wearing tight shoes, they look good, they sound good, but your feet knows the difference. To take a vacation, you got to rest, Papa. You can't rest in a little time. The days go too quick. Well, maybe I'm thinking about it. Uh, well, maybe I could make it three weeks. Or no, two no, weeks. No, 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 no. Two weeks, three weeks, no, Jake. Maybe you better not make it at all. Mom, 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 I don't understand you. For ten minutes, you're arguing we should take a rest. Then when I want to, you say no. Maybe we should start the argument all over again. Don't be nonsensible, Jake. To start over, we'd get no place. Besides, all the time we're away, you would be worrying about the business. Well, maybe Harold and Sydney could take care of it for a little while. Besides, Sam will be back day after tomorrow. You would worry about the business. Then all the time we are away, you would be going crazy, and I'd bring home a wild man from Brooklyn. Becky, I could promise you I wouldn't worry. You shouldn't make promises you don't keep. But I always keep a promise. You know that, Mama. Yeah, maybe I promise that you should do something, yes. But a promise like not to worry? <laughs> it would be in your head that you'd have to keep it. Worry is inside. How would I know you'd be keeping it? Well, Mommy, you could tell by looking at me. Maybe you'd have a pinochle face. Becky, if I worry one little time, I promise you I'll come straight home. Yes, Mama, I promise that. You want to retire? Who said something about retiring? Well, four weeks, maybe. More than that. Well, five weeks, maybe six. Maybe. Good, I'll tell them. No, I will. All right. <laughs> Mama. Yeah? Why did you want that blank check? Uh, you see, Jake? All the time we're talking about something else, you're worrying about the blank checks. All the time you would worry about the business, and I wouldn't know. Becky, this is different. Why did you want the blank check? I will tell you. To pay for something. What should cost so much as you should pay for it by check? Something that comes on a little envelope. Ticket. Ticket. Two tickets for Yellowstone Park. <laughs>